Hello, I'm giving you my thoughts on 10 different foundations that I have tested over the past several months. It's been a while since my last foundation roundup and you've been asking me your thoughts on several of these foundations. So I'm gonna tell you how they worked for my skin type, what skin types I think would benefit from these foundations the most. Some of these foundations are newer, some are new to me, and I have foundations of all different types and price ranges. Now, some of these I have mentioned before on my channel, but it's been a while, or maybe you just missed those videos, so I just thought I would talk about them all together here so that you could reference it in a foundation place playlist and not have to hunt around for it on my channel. Welcome back. Welcome if it's your first time here. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, I do hope you consider doing so before the end of this video and becoming part of the family. All right, let's go ahead and get into these 10 foundations that I've been trying out. So I have mentioned this first foundation on my channel before, though very briefly, so some of you may have missed it or may wanna know what I think. This is the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue Foundation. It has broad spectrum SPF 45. It's $45 for 1.2 ounces. There are 20 shades. I'm in the shade 2W1 Dawn, which is the same shade I wear in Estee Lauder Double Wear, and I've talked about that foundation a lot here on my channel. I found this applied really, really easily with any method, my fingers, a brush, or a sponge. There is a soft fragrance to this. It didn't bother me though and it did dissipate after my makeup was applied. I just know some people don't really like having a fragrance in their foundation so I did want to mention that. This feels nice and hydrating but not heavy on the skin but I can kind of feel it on the skin. I wouldn't call it extremely lightweight. Now right after I applied this it was really really dewy. So dewy I was a little bit skeptical but after I set it with powder it set settled into a nice soft radiant finish, but it wasn't too radiant for my skin type. I would say this gives light to medium coverage depending on how you apply it or how much you build it. Now I did test this out in the summer. I have very, very hot and humid summers here, so keep that in mind. And it did settle into my expressive forehead lines during the day a little bit. It just kind of gathered in those areas. So I'm anxious to see how this performs in the fall and winter. It's still 80 degrees here right now as I'm filming this. But aside from that, I felt like it gave a really nice natural finish. And if I didn't have a super long day where I was in a ton of heat, it wore really nicely. I feel like this works really great across all skin types. I think normal to dry skin people will really, really like this. I think for normal to oily skin people, it's going to depend on the finish you like. This is a nice natural looking light to medium coverage foundation. This next foundation is one that I ordered online because I was just curious about it. This is the number seven protect and perfect advanced all in one foundation. Now there's a lot of stuff printed on this bottle. So let me take a look at it really quickly. It says that it's hydrating, age defying, it gives medium coverage, there's broad spectrum SPF 50, and it's suitable for sensitive skin. There are 12 shades. I'm in the shade medium beige, and there is one ounce of product in this little tube. And it averages around $15, depending on which retailer you get it from. I find the application to be very quick and easy, and it feels really nice and lightweight and good on the skin. Now my particular shade has kind of a gray cast to it. It did end up blending into the skin just fine, but when I was applying it, I was a little bit worried. I think it's because of the high SPF. I found that it gives nice buildable light to medium coverage. It blurred the pores really nicely, and it looked really nice and gave kind of a soft radiant finish after application that after setting looked just like a soft matte. Now I can smell the sunscreen in this when I wear it slightly. It's just that sunscreen smell, you know. There are some nice skincare ingredients in this too, which, which is a good thing. So the bad thing for me about this is that despite how nice it looks on the skin and how nice it feels is that it tends to kind of fade and transfer a lot during the day, even though I don't get particularly greasy. I mean, I've tested all of these foundations out in various ways with different primers and different powders, and it tends to do that no matter what I'm wearing it with or how I apply it or set it. It says it's great for all skin types, and it says it's great for sensitive skin, but I do want to make a note that it's not just mineral sunscreen in here. It's also got octanoxate and octosilate, salate, you know, which are chemical. And, you know, I have sensitive skin, and sometimes I can get away with those if I'm not wearing them every single day. I didn't react to this, but I don't know how I would react if this was my day in, day out foundation. 
So I did want to make you aware of that. So for the longevity reason, I would say this would probably be best for dry or normal skin because on my oily T-zone, it just wore away no matter what I did. But aside from that, I think it's really pretty. So if you have normal dry skin, you may want to check it out. The It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation plus skincare is a foundation I get asked about a lot. I think I mentioned it maybe one time. It claims on here that you can improve your bare skin in two weeks. It's water light and gives medium coverage and a natural radiant finish. I am in the shade medium warm 32. There are 40 shades and it is $39.50 for one ounce of product. This applies very quickly, very easily with any method and it feels really good, nice and light on the skin. It also looks super natural and does minimize the pores and it gives medium buildable coverage. It's supposed to give all day hydration and my skin does feel nice and plump and hydrated. I haven't tried wearing it every day for two weeks just because of the nature of what I do, but I would like to see if it improves your skin over the course of two weeks. If any of you have done that, let me know. Also, let me know if you have foundations you'd like me to try out. I am always game for trying new foundations. Let me know in the comments down below. And by the way, all of these foundations, as well as what I'm wearing, will be listed down below in the description box. You can just hit the title of the video or show more, depending whether you're on desktop or mobile, and the description box will drop down. That's how you'll get to all the products. This doesn't have incredibly long wear on long hot days. It does wipe away with a tissue and things like that fairly easily, but if I pair it with, you know, a good primer and a good setting spray, it does improve the wear. You know, there's some foundations that I'll use where no matter what I do, it just doesn't help, but this when paired with the right products will last a decent amount of time. This is the foundation I have on today, and I got my hair cut today and had a mask on for a good hour and a half and it was actually pretty hot and humid it's still 80 degrees here I think I said that earlier in the video and I really don't think it faded much at all except for where she you know washed my hair around my hairline I think it lasted pretty well I used my Shiseido Wasso primer and Charlotte Tilbury setting spray I've had it on for eight hours now I'm pretty happy I would say this works great across all skin types I mean I've been out in the heat and it's held up really nicely I usually only have to blot like once or twice on a long day it's a really nice foundation let's move to a foundation that did not work for me whatsoever and it works for a ton of people so this is the Elia Super Serum Skin Tint. There are 18 shades and I was in the shade Bomb Bomb. The price is $46 for one ounce. I got a sample of this so I don't have it here to show you. This has a very thin consistency and it did apply very very easily and quickly. I remember when I applied this how it felt kind of greasy on my skin but I've applied many foundations before that have felt a little bit dewy or greasy but then once you set them down with powder they turn Turn out fine. So I always have an open mind when that happens. It did appear super, super dewy and it didn't do much for my pores. I powered through and set it with powder and it just still had kind of a radiant finish on me, which you know, I just never know how that's going to go. Now it was very, very natural looking. I will give it that. But on the days I wore it, it transferred terribly and just wore away in spots. That's not typically a problem I have with a lot of foundations unless they're just totally incompatible with my skin for some reason. I feel like this is a foundation that is really really great for normal to dry skin but if you have oily combination skin it may or may not work for you and it also may have something to do with my hot and humid climate. So keep that in mind because climate can be the difference maker sometimes but for me this foundation was terrible. Next we have Rare Beauty. This is $29 for one ounce and there are 48 shades. I am in the shade 210N. Now I do have a video where I show applying this. It did apply very, very quickly. It's very, very runny, but it feels super, super, super lightweight. Like I couldn't even feel it on my skin. It's very luminous on my skin and it did okay with pores. Not bad, not good. It just, you know, made my skin look very natural and our skin has pores. I say that a lot. Our skin has pores. We're supposed to have pores. And if a foundation doesn't so much conceal your pores, but doesn't emphasize them either. I think that's okay. That's just what our skin is supposed to look like. And I felt like that's what this did. It gave medium coverage and I felt like it lasted a decent amount of time. But as the day went on, I did feel like my pores kind of got more emphasized. It faded around my mouth pretty badly. And that's not an area that I typically 
fade. You know, if I'm going to fade with a foundation, it's usually around this area, maybe here, you know, my T-zone where I get shiny. That Not typically around my mouth. I just thought that was really odd. It also settled into my big forehead wrinkle really really badly i think this is probably better for normal skin and dry skin for me it just didn't perform that well i wasn't thrilled with it this is the Too Faced Born This Way Matte Foundation, and this was pretty hyped until another foundation came out and took its place. We'll talk about that foundation in a minute. This is a 24-hour wear foundation, and on the front of the bottle, it says it's an undetectable super long wear foundation. It's $40 for one ounce. There are 35 shades, and I'm in the shade Natural Beige. I feel like all the foundations in this video applied easily and blended out nicely. This one did too. This foundation felt really lightweight Weight on the skin and although this says matte it gave a natural matte finish which is exactly what I look for in a matte foundation this looks natural on the skin but it doesn't look like you're you're born with the skin it doesn't look that skin like and natural it doesn't completely conceal pores but it doesn't emphasize them either so from that standpoint it looks natural but you don't look like you're not wearing makeup you know the coverage is buildable from medium to a solid medium full it's got really nice coverage it is sweat proof and it's waterproof and it's pretty darn bulletproof. I mean, it lasts all day long on a long hot day. I hardly have to blot all day long. I think this is a great foundation for normal to oily skin. If you have dry skin, I probably wouldn't go with this one unless you're going to mix in a moisturizer or something, you know, which is an option if you're looking for a long wear foundation. But this is a really nice foundation that is great for those of us who have issues keeping foundation on our face and keeping foundation shine free. Let's talk about another foundation fail <laughs> that I don't have here with me. I don't even know where I put this foundation. I may have already given it to somebody. I dug through all my drawers and I cannot find it. I'm not really sad about it because I'm not going to be reaching for it. I think I already put this as a fail in one of my monthly faves and fails videos because it just was terrible for me. This is the J-Cat Aqua Assurance Foundation that had been recommended to me from so many people because it works for a lot of you and I wanted it to work for me, but it just didn't. There are 13 shades and I wish I could remember my shade. If I do remember it, I will list it down in the description box. It is $13.99 roughly, depending on where you buy it, for 0.31 ounces. So this isn't, you know, in a bottle. It's a compact foundation. I didn't mind how it felt on my skin after I applied it and it gave okay coverage, but it just didn't seem to truly meld with my skin. I just felt like it always looked like it was kind of sitting on top of my skin. And I have so many other compact powder foundations that really look great on my skin. I, I couldn't quite figure out where this was going wrong for me. It also didn't control my oil at all and it broke up throughout the day. I mean, it was just a big fat fail. It just did not work for me whatsoever. So this one is not great for me and I would venture to guess maybe it won't work for a lot of people with oily skin or combination skin but I don't know your mileage may vary again you may have totally different experiences with all of these foundations than I do everyone's different your skincare can make a difference the sunscreen you use the climate you live in all of those things this one just didn't work for me this is the foundation I expected the most from because it's the priciest foundation of the bunch and quite honestly I expect a lot out of it because I've had a lot of success from other things from Chanel and so I expect a lot from this too. This is the Ultra Latent Foundation. It says on here it provides ultra wear all day comfort and it's a flawless finish foundation. There are 30 shades. I'm pretty consistent in Chanel foundations with wearing the shade B30. This foundation is $60 for one ounce. This feels really good on the skin. I really only need less than a pump to do my whole face which is a lot less than with most other foundations so I do think I get a lot for my money a little goes a long way is what I'm trying to say this has a luminous perfecting soft focus powder in it that's supposed to you know just give your face a soft focus and just be really really flattering and I do find that after I apply it my pores look nice everything just looks nice and diffused and beautiful it just wears so well 
all day long and I mean I've blown my nose with it on and it just doesn't come off. I feel like this is a great bulletproof long wearing foundation that works great for dry and normal skin as well as oily combination skin. So I'm kind of surprised by it. I thought it was going to be more matte than it is. This does give a nice soft matte look to my skin after I set it for I guess about three to four hours. Then I do have some shine breakthrough and I have to blot I guess about every three to four hours. I don't really mind though because the finish is so pretty. I just feel like my skin looks really pretty when I wear this. This gives I would say medium to medium full coverage that doesn't look heavy. It just looks really natural. I've been reaching for it more than I thought I would. I think this is going to be great for me in the winter months when my t-zone gets a little bit more normal. I feel like people with normal and dry skin kind of have a harder time finding bulletproof foundations that will really work for them well because a lot of them are matte and emphasize their dry areas a lot and I feel like this kind of could fill in that gap because it has that just nice diffused finish. It's not too matte and I think it could work well across all skin types if you don't mind having a little bit of radiance come through you know if you have oily combination skin. I'm kind of surprised at how much I've been reaching for this actually especially you know since I do kind of like that soft matte finish that I don't have to touch up but there's just there's something about the finish of this that I really, really like. So yeah, I've really been enjoying this. I think I talked about this at the beginning of the year and I haven't talked about it since because other things come up, but I have been wearing it because this Bite Beauty Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation is really good. This is $39.50 for one ounce of product. There are 32 shades and I'm in the shade M55. This has kind of a whipped moussey texture, which means it applies super quick and easily and I feel like I have nothing on my skin when I'm wearing this foundation. This isn't really matte or radiant. It just gives a beautiful natural finish that's flattering to the skin. This makes me look like I have naturally good skin that still has pores. They're not emphasized. They're not concealed. I would say they're more blurred than they're not, but they're not completely blurred. It's just a flattering foundation. I find this gives medium coverage, but I don't find it layers well. I don't know if that's because it's whipped, but that medium coverage is just nice, medium, healthy looking coverage. It's got nice ingredients. It makes the skin look nice and healthy, and it wears a decent amount of time too. I feel like this is great for any skin type. I've really enjoyed this foundation. I also love the packaging. It's nice and light and portable. This has been a surprise hit for me. I've really enjoyed this. Now the first couple of times I showed you guys the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation, in those videos I was using the shade Santa Fe, but I was sent a few shades after that and I think the shade Punjab works really really well for me too. I am kind of leaning towards Punjab a little bit more than Santa Fe because the undertone works really well. So I just wanted to give you that update. So this is the one foundation that is 1.5 ounce you get a ton of foundation in here. It's $40 and there are 34 shades. This is also the one foundation in this foundation roundup that doesn't apply super quick and easily. It kind of grips to the skin as you're applying it and I'll put the link to the video or any videos where I'm actually applying any of these foundations where you can kind of see. I mean you have to apply it kind of quickly because it sets pretty quickly. I feel like that gripping to the skin is what makes this so great with long wear. This is beautiful with the pores. The the name is perfect. It is a soft matte. It's not a full matte that just looks really masky. It's really pretty. I find I don't need to layer this much at all. It gives medium to solid full coverage. I only ever need to use one layer with this and I feel like the coverage I get is beautiful. This lasts through a super long day and night it doesn't go anywhere. Now I do feel like towards the end of the day, my skin starts feeling a little bit dry, which never happens with me. But again, I feel like that's the longevity factor because it's bulletproof. I mean, this is so bulletproof. I definitely think this works better for normal to oily skin. If you have dry skin, I would not go for this one. But if you have normal to oily skin, especially combination to oily skin, I think this should be a go-to long wearing medium to full coverage foundation for you. It is 
stunningly beautiful on the skin. It doesn't look heavy and it lasts through anything. I have an entire playlist dedicated to top foundations lists of various types, top skin light foundations, top long wearing foundations, things like that. So if you haven't seen that, you may want to check that out if you're looking for a specific type of foundation. If you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button and become part of the family. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know if you want me to review a certain type of foundation and I'll look into it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.